All right. I've been all in on the Texans this year. I'm so excited about what they're doing, but let's just take a minute and realize they're still a young team. Three and three was overachieving. So three and four isn't that far from it. Yeah, it wasn't a good week. Yes, you lost to a Carolina Panthers team that was 0-6. No, nobody's happy about it. But the fix is simple. The solution is simple. So we're going to get into that. But before we do that, if you haven't yet, like, subscribe, leave a comment. What do you think the solution is? Like, what did the Texans do differently in this game that um, that led you to believe that they came out with a loss, that the offense looked stagnant, the offense did not look good, the offense kind of looked like it did in the preseason, to be completely honest with you. So what did the Texans do in this game that makes you feel that? Now I'm going to go ahead and talk about what I think is the problem, but I'm also going to tell you what C.J. Stroud thought was the problem. All right, he said, I'm not saying I'm playing terrible. This is how we began. He said, but I'm not making the plays I want to make. Okay, great. So he kind of takes the ownership, right? So he says like, all right, I'm not, I'm not doing what I should be doing. We all know that it wasn't a great game. So he's not going to come out here and be like, I'm awesome. All right. So now this is the next one. And then the title of this article is kind of what got me. Um, that's kind of what got me. Um, uh, but I, I love the way he explained it. And, and so I'm going to get into another quote here. Then we're going to go dive into the numbers. He said, we've got to be explosive like we want to be. We got to take some shots and be more explosive and make some plays down the field. We can't let them dictate us. In other words, they were allowing the defense just to make them be a dink and dunk team and run the ball heavy and just kind of do that as they kind of played that shell of a coverage. But here's where he finally kind of took some ownership. He said, that's me getting more trust from the coaches. This is a guy who's played six NFL games. Six. He needs to get more trust from the coaches. He said, we have the talent to be explosive. We've shown, if not a top five offense, a top 10 offense. We can do it. Got to call it and run it. Okay, so here's the deal. They have been good. We know that they have been good. All right. They haven't been amazing. They started the year with two losses. They scored nine and 20. Then they put up 37 on the Jags. Then they put up 30 on the Steelers, put up 19 in a loss, put up 20 against the Saints and in a win. And now in this game, they only were able to muster up, you know, I mean, just not much. Okay. That's just kind of the way it goes. So sometimes you have games like this. We've said on this channel, we're Lions fans. You see that lion back there. We love teams that don't get the national attention as they should. And so like, that's why we're here. And when you look at the Detroit lions, the Detroit lions just got trounced. They were five and one and they got absolutely smoked by the Ravens. It's the NFL. Any given Sunday. That's why the phrase exists. That's why the phrase exists. So, yeah, I want to talk about that. So, um, going back to this article, it talks about how Strad, Stroud, why did I say Strad? All right, has his duo of young receivers. Nico Collins and Tank Dell have certainly shown flashes of being legitimate. Okay, but they weren't going into it. Robert Woods and Dalton Schultz, Schultz, yeah, they're good players too, and they've shown the ability to be consistent. But the, they, this isn't a quarterback who has proven at an NFL level for a long period of time that he's phenomenal. This isn't a wide receiving core that has proven for a long time that they're phenomenal. Now am I all in? Yeah, I'm all in. Look at my fantasy team. I'm all in on C.J. Stroud. I'm all in. I, I, I am. I'm all in on Nico Collins. I think these guys are legit. I think they're fantastic. And I think they're going to be good for years to come. Tank Dell as well. But that doesn't mean you're not going to hit bumps in the road. And even with all that to be said, when you look at it, as we look at the box score here, it wasn't that bad. No, 140 yards is nothing. We get that. He was under duress all day. All right, he was under duress all day. I know it only ended up in, I believe, two sacks, but he was he had a lot of pressure. But he still was able to have 16 of 24 completions for 140 yards. 
the running backs weren't been great. Like the running backs weren't great, but it wasn't awful either. Honestly, this is probably one of the better rushing games you had. So it was there. There was just an ability to capitalize on it. Just an inability to capitalize and an inability to make consistent long drives. So the solution is simple. We kept talking about the solution, right? What's the solution? The solution, open it up. Let CJ Stroud go. The dude has what? One interception all year, seven games. Let him rip it a little bit. Let him go. Let him make some mistakes. Let him make some plays. And let's see what can happen when you're allowing Tank Dell, when you're allowing Nico Collins, when you're allowing, even if the defense is playing two safeties deep, even if it looks like it's not open, what happens when you take a couple shots? What happens when you take a couple shots? How does that open up other things? Um, Let's open it up a little bit. And I love what he was talking about with gathering the trust. Um, Yeah, but he said that he went on to say, that's why we haven't been consistent. Bobby has done a great job calling it. Hopefully we start being a little bit more explosive. And that's what he's saying. There needs to be a consistency and an opportunity to attack down the field. I understand that with rookie quarterbacks, you see the kid gloves with Bryce Young. Like you, you see it even more so before they changed at offensive coordinator. But at the same time, you need to know that CJ Stroud is different. Dude is different. And he has been so good thus far. And maybe part of that is because of how good the play calling's been. But the last three games, there is there is some proof and teams are starting to catch on. And now the Texans need to continue to be aggressive. Don't say, okay, we had some success. We're going to continue in that. No, no, no. You adapt or die. Move on. Continue to get better or die. That's the way it works in the NFL. And it doesn't matter who you are playing. If you're playing the Carolina Panthers, if you're playing the Houston Texans, you need to continue to get better. You need to continue to be more aggressive. And that's kind of what I saw when I was watching the game was just, you know, it was just bland on both sides, not as bland as watching the New York jets and the New York giants. That game was awful. I would rather watch paint dry than watch that football game because at least it's not infuriating to watch. So anyways, there's kind of my thoughts on the game. The solution's simple. Let your rookie cook. What's it going to hurt? If he does, if he cooks, you got a playoff team. If he doesn't, it's okay. You just continue, you get better, and you get back at it next year, and he learns from it. So I think he's at that stage already in his young career. All right, let me know what you think, and uh, hopefully we'll see you on the next one.